Hi everybody, this is Mr. Nolan, and what I would like to do in this video uh, is talk a little bit about glaciers. Um, in particular, uh, I want to show you how to use a simulator uh, in order to observe uh, sort of more realistic glaciers. So that's what we want to be able to do. We want to be able to explain how a real glacier, or at least a realistic simulation of a glacier, flows, uh, and how changing the conditions of the environment influence its behavior. How does this work? So in order to be successful uh, with this um, uh, with this work, you're going to need two things. One of them is this document. So this document is on my website. Um, and then you're also going to need the simulator located at this uh, URL. And so I'm going to kind of show you um, sort of what this document looks like and, and how to use the simulator. Um, that way we can be successful uh, in using the simulator to understand how glaciers behave. We want to come to some conclusions about how glaciers behave. So when you open up this simulator, uh, you're going to see this. So this simulator, you can see it's actually a, um, a, an animation. And we can see that the glacier is flowing, so we get a sense for what's going on with that glacier. Um, and uh, this, this document is going to help guide you through uh, investigating this glacier. Um, so the first few things that uh, you're going to have to be able to do are just make some initial observations about how this glacier is behaving. And so I'll kind of walk you through some of these points. And then I want to help you with some of the graphing that we're going to be doing. So uh, on this portion of the document, I'm asking you at these different locations on the glacier, uh, what is it doing? And so we want to know at A, B, C, D, E, and F. So I'll help you a little about, a bit with this so that you can figure out what's going on at these different parts of the glacier. So we need to use some tools in order to understand what this glacier is doing. So let's come over here to the simulator, and I'll show you what some of these tools are. Um, so first of all, in the simulator, this is our animation of the glacier. And we can actually um, you drag this little bear around so that we can kind of move our field of view. That way we can look around a little bit. We can move way down the mountain, or we can come back up the mountain. Uh, we, well, you know, so There's going to be points where you have to move around to see that glacier. Um, so one of the tools that we're going to use down here in our toolbox um, is what's called the uh, glacial budget meter. So you can click and drag. So this tool, we can click this and drag this. And we can put it over uh, on different parts of the glacier. And so if I click that and drag that, it might be a little hard to see on your screen. But we see these two different terms, accumulation and ablation. These are sort of strange terms, but if we're thinking about a glacier, um, accumulation all that that means is material being added to the glacier. And if you think about what a glacier is really made out of, it's, it's basically made of ice or snow or some kind of frozen water. And so all that accumulation means is basically uh, material being added to the glacier. Ablation is the opposite of accumulation. And so if you think for a minute about it, ablation, what that really means, it just means melting. So at any point on this glacier, we have two things going on. We have accumulation, material being added, like snow. And then we have ablation, where materials are actually melting. If the accumulation is higher than the ablation, that means that the glacier at that point is actually getting thicker. So here the accumulation is about 3.76 feet and then down uh, per year. And then down here, the ablation is about uh, 3. You know, six, six, seven feet per year. So what that means is that it's accumulating faster than it's melting. What that means is the glacier is growing. Over here, the glacier is actually shrinking because our accumulation is lower than our ablation. Um, and so different parts of the glacier are either growing or shrinking depending on where you are. And if you look really carefully, you'll notice that this little gray line here, um, if you click down here in the view box, you'll notice that the what's called the uh, equilibrium line shows up right there. And uh, at this point, the ablation and the accumulation are equal. These numbers are, are equal, which means that our change in the size of the glacier is zero right here. It doesn't change. The glacier is actually staying the same uh, thickness. It's not increasing or decreasing. It's increasing over here. It's decreasing over there. Um, that's one of the first things to figure out is just what is happening at different parts of the glacier. Anytime you're done with a tool, you can just go over here, just put it back in the toolbox. So uh, that should help you out a little bit with, with answering some of the questions here, looking at uh, some of these questions, what's happening at these different parts of the glacier. A bit more challenging portion of this uh, web lab is doing a bit of graphing. And I want to help you with how are we going to do some graphing here. So um, one of the things that we need to do is to graph temperature and how that affects different part, uh, aspects of the glacier, such as its maximum thickness and its length. We're also going to do the same thing with snowfall. And then there's some questions here that you can answer. So I want to help you with kind of scaling the axes um, for, our, um, for our graphs. And so I want to jump over here uh, and, and help you figure out how, how to do that. 
Um, so let's look at our simulator. Uh, we have we have a glacier which is which is moving around, and what we want to do is is figure out how do we show how the temperature affects the thickness of the glacier. Let's just start with that. Um, and by, by maximum thickness, what I'm really talking about is the thickness of the glacier right here at the equilibrium line. That's the thickest part of the glacier. So um, the first thing to recognize is that we can get the, the thickness of the glacier with this little tool from our toolbox. If you just click and drag it at any point in the glacier, it will report the thickness of it. And we're only interested in the thickness at this dotted line, this equilibrium line. This is the thickest part of the glacier. And so right now at 66.2 degrees, it's about 415 feet thick. That's actually really thick. Um, but uh, at 66.2 degrees on average, if that's the global temperature, this is uh, where we find the, uh, um, the, the thickness right there. So uh, what we're really trying to do is trying to change the temperature and see how that affects the thickness. So the, to change the temperature, you can actually click and drag these little um, uh, these sliders down here. So if I went ahead and decreased the temperature, look at what happens. So my glacier has now really you know, screamed out ahead as I decrease that uh, average temperature. The glacier goes zooming ahead. And in order to see the front of the glacier, I have to grab my little bear up here and I have to move him so I can see the terminus or the front of that glacier. Now one thing that gets really annoying here, if I'm trying to determine the thickness of the glacier while the glacier is moving, see how that equilibrium line keeps moving around? That's really sort of annoying. So if if I want to, to make sure that that stays put, all that I have to do is just find this little button down here that says set glacier to steady state. Watch what happens when I click that. What has just happened is that the glacier is now sitting still. It's not moving. It's not changing, really. It's just sort of, uh, it's just flowing and then, uh, you know, kind of staying still. So now this equilibrium line is, is in, you know, is exactly where it's going to stay put, right? It's not moving around. So now what I can do, now that I have changed the temperature, I can take my thickness tool and I can figure out, okay, at that temperature, the maximum thickness of my glacier is about 1,140 feet thick. Okay, so that's uh, something like a quarter of a mile, right? So it's a pretty thick glacier. And then I can put my, my tool back. So uh, in order to graph this, what we really have to think about is, okay, we have a range of temperatures. We have a really low temperatures, in which case my glacier is going to increase, might get bigger. Uh, and then we have high temperatures, in which case uh, it's going to melt, right? We're going to melt our glacier. And so if I really crank up the heat, we can see that our glacier... Uh, is going to uh, melt away uh, rather quickly, right? So our glacier has now melted away. Um, I can always reset if we need to reset. So let's think about how it is that we're going to graph this um, this glacier. So uh, you're going to start with with one of these graphing spaces on the document. So this document has some great graphing spaces here. But in order for the graphs to work, we have to figure out ranges of temperature and maximum thickness. So to do that, we really need to use the simulator to figure out what are those ranges. Well, we already have a range for temperature right here. It ranges all the way from about 55 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So that should be on our x-axis. It should go all the way from 55 to 68. So what we should really see um, on our x-axis is something like this. So see what I have done here is I have scaled my temperature axis all the way from the lowest temperature, 55, to the highest temperature, or close to the highest temperature, 60, uh, 68. So I, didn't, I kind of ran out of room, so we're just going to stop at 67. And I have to do the same thing to the thickness over here, the maximum thickness on the y-axis. This is basically my responding variable. So I've got my, my manipulated variable down here. I'm going to change the temperature and see how that affects my maximum thickness. So I have to figure out the range of thicknesses that my glacier is going to, uh, to exhibit. Um, and so what we saw here was that at a uh, temperature of 68, my glacier disappears, right? I have no glacier left. So our, our minimum uh, thickness is going to be zero. Our thickness meter doesn't even read anything here. Uh, and then if I turn down the, the temperature, if I really crank the AC and hit set glacier to steady state, if I jump over here to the thickest, let me take a look there. So I see that a little over 1,400 feet is my thickest that I'm going to encounter here. So what that means, now that I've got my temperature, um, I also need to uh, designate my thickness. And so what I did was that I, I created a range here on my graph all the way from 0 to 1,500, because that includes uh, everything from 0 when the glacier had melted all the way up to 1,428, where this is the thickest uh, that I'm going to find. 
So all that I'm trying to do here, all I'm trying to explain is that you really have to scale your axes. You have to scale your axes first, and then you have to start getting some data in there. So uh, just as an example, I'll do this, kind of do this graph for you. If we take a look at those two data points that we already found, we found that at a high temperature, like 67 or higher, there is no glacier, right? The glacier has melted, and so that's zero, right? The thickness is zero. Um, at the very thickest, when I really chilled it off, so low temperature at 55, a little over 55, um, the maximum thickness was just a little over 1400. So I'm putting a point right there too. So we have two points really easy to see here. Now what this doesn't show us, these two points, it doesn't really show us whether the graph is curving or whether it's a straight line. We don't really know that until we add more points. So if I come over here, uh, and if I, you know, maybe look at some other points, so maybe if I you know, look at about 62 degrees, click set glacier to steady state. If I jump over here to the thickest portion of my glacier, I see, oh, that's 1,188 feet. Or maybe if I, you know, decrease the temperature a little bit more, uh, we can see that the thickest part of the glacier over here that has moved is now 1,000, uh, 1,300 feet. Or if I increase the temperature a bit, and if I set that to the steady state, let's go find that. There's my thickness. And that's only a little over a thousand feet. So just by taking different temperatures uh, and then taking a look at what that does to to the glacier, um, what we're really doing is we're just trying to establish what what is my my glacier doing at these different temperatures, right? Once it has has equilibrated. So if I were to go ahead and add a few more of those points, we're going to see a graph that looks a little bit like this. So as we increase the temperature, the glacier shrinks just a tiny bit. It gets a little thinner, a little thinner, a little thinner. And then what's interesting is that just at about 65 uh, or 65 and a half degrees, whoosh, the glacier really shrinks really rapidly. And so one of the things that we learn from this, especially if we add a, a line of, of best fit, uh, it's, we can see that it's not a straight line. Um, you know, it's, it really falls really rapidly after we get to a certain point. So one thing we can conclude from this is that glaciers are very, very sensitive to temperature, um, especially toward the higher end, that if we, you know, just change a few degrees, they just plummet. They just shrink really rapidly. Now, you're also going to have to do the same thing, not only for changing the temperature, you're going to also have to do this for snowfall. You're going to take a look at what does the snowfall do um, when you raise or lower the snowfall. Same thing, you just have to scale the axis, both of them, scale the y-axis uh, and the x-axis, and then once you do that, then you can plot those data points, and you can figure out how the snowfall affects the thickness, or how the temperature affects the total glacier length. By the way, the total glacier length, to determine this, all I have to do is find the uh, find the end of the glacier. So here's the end of the glacier. And I'm going to take this little GPS monitor and just set it right at the end of the glacier. All that this tells me is where it says distance there. That distance is uh, how long the glacier is, because that's, from, that's the distance from the terminus of the glacier, the very end, all the way from the beginning. This is zero. If we take our GPS and put it here, we can see our distance from the, the beginning of, of the glacier is obviously zero, right? The distance is zero feet from the start. If we come over here, our distance is 94,000 feet. So you're going to have to scale uh, these axes for the glacier length. We're going to have to scale those axes all the way up to, um, you know, a, a couple hundred thousand feet. Um, because depending on, you know, the size of our glacier, um, we, you know, might have that somewhere in the hundreds of thousands, or we might have that, you know, just down at a couple of thousand. So we're going to have to scale those properly. A um, couple more words on this document uh, as far as what we are uh, looking for in our glacier. Um, one thing I'm going to ask you to do is to take a look at a steady state glacier. Um, how does its thickness vary at different elevations? This is basically, we're basically just drawing a cross section of the glacier. That's kind of what we're doing here. So you're going to have to scale the axis of the elevation that's shown here by the GPS. You'll notice it has, says elevation there. Um, you're going to have to scale the elevation and the thickness of the glacier at different elevations. And you'll notice, again, this is not going to be a straight line. This is going to look a little unusual. And so there's some questions I want you to answer about uh, the, uh, the thickness of the glacier depending on the elevation. Um, there's the bore hole tool that uh, is pretty interesting to use. Um, if we look at an active glacier uh, and if we hit it with the, uh, uh, with the bore hole, uh, what's kind of neat here is that we can actually see when we hit it with the bore hole that uh, if, we, if we put a line through the glacier, we can actually see that the lines move at different rates. So this tells us the, the different rates that the, uh, the glacier is moving in, in different portions of that glacier. 
And then finally, I want you to think about what are called moraines. These are when the glacier acts upon the sediments. Um, what, what is happening when the glacier retreats or when it advances uh, over those sediments? And so we're going to talk a little bit more about these later. Um, but I hope that this was a little bit helpful in, in showing you how this simulator works and uh, helping you figure out how real glacier flows depending on the environmental conditions.